Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we're doing another episode of our Jurassic World Evolution 2 Mod Spotlights. We'll take a look at some of the wonderful mods people have been making and compare them to their real life fossil counterparts. And today we have got uh, our full pack as I mentioned, OG Bears getting his time on the spotlight with the first part of his uh, really wonderful uh, Paleo Edits pack. So this has, uh, I've, I put the Dimetrodon in the last video but this has got the other 10 uh, animals from that pack so this is going to be quite a stacked pack today and since they're model edits and I just really only talk about the an anatomical changes I thought that would be easy to fit in and we could still have a decently long video so um yeah we're going to get started off today with OG Bear again uh, we're starting off with uh, Dryosaurus Let's have a look at here, so we can see some minor edits here. We especially see some changes in the patterns. It's kind of the most notable, I think. You can see here some quite uh, big changes here. So you can see that's quite neon green, and then you got over here all these like uh, mottled patterns. That looks really, really nice, especially these reticulated patterns over here. Does look really, really nice. I'm definitely a big fan of that. But we can see some of the major changes on here. Uh, I think the head's also been extended, made a little bit bigger. Uh, also, you can see the um, Hips also been generally rounded a bit and all that. Some pretty minor edits. Uh, really, really nice. We actually do not have an adult Dryosaurus specimen. Most of them are uh, sub-adults or uh, juveniles. So we don't really know what they would quite look like as adults. But I think something like this is about right. You can see the changes in the head there. The really big eyes. Uh, I think there's a little bit of neck changes as well. So we've got these uh, five-fingered hands which look very, very silly but kind of cool. And you can see some changes to the feet there and everything, uh, the, the pubis and all that. And since these are bird hip dinosaurs, when it's the skins, they kind of have their uh, hip kind of turned back like that, which allowed for more area in their gut for um, fermentation and uh, uh, more, more room for their guts, pretty much. And then I can think the tails also have been elongated quite a bit, because as I've mentioned a couple times, uh, often the dinosaurs of Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, their tails are far too short. But yeah, I really like the changes to the skull. I think it's been quite a bit more rounded. Uh, looks really, really nice uh, compared to the uh, in-game one. Really, really nice. A uh, big fan, big, big fan. So that's our first one done. Let them run off and do their thing. As they walk right in front of my hatchery, uh, these guys... Uh, Definitely wild. So next moving up to another animal from the late Jurassic of the Morrison, we've got Camarasaurus. Let's have a wonderful look at these big guys. So how can you not love Camarasaurus? You can see some of the major changes on these guys, especially in the skull here. You can see those lips have been greatly extended down. There is evidence that sauropods have this kind of keratin cut, uh, covering around their lips there, especially in Camarasaurus. Uh, potentially like a pseudo beak almost. It's a little bit of debate here and there, but really, really cool. One thing I would change though is the nostril placement. This is very much like the older kind of interpretations where a lot of sauropods were thought to have their nostrils at the back of their um, like head. But due to monitor lizards and a lot of inferences, it's believed that the nostrils would have been up up here, similar to most, uh, pretty much all other animals, uh, up here to uh, um, breathe and such like that. And we can see also some changes, especially to the neck. The neck's been greatly fattened, uh, rather than that really skinny neck that the base game one has. It looks really, really weird. You can also see these legs have been changed. They don't have the elephantine feet, as you can kind of see here, that um, the Jurassic World sauropods have. You can see definitely what's really awesome is they managed to change the feet, because the sauropods 
have these uh, fleshy hooves, as you can kind of see here. Um, especially some of the early ones have these large dew claws. Some of the later ones, like titanosaurs, they even completely lose some of the digits. So they basically just walk around kind of on their like knuckles all the time, which is really, really interesting. But there's something like Camarasaurus, which is a basal macronarian. Uh, these guys kind of have um, just that fleshy hoof there. And you can see it's almost, you could even like make it a little bit more horseshoe, but you can see it's got that in the large dew claw. Uh, same on the back here, there's, even though these top, these two digits, the fourth and fifth digit would not have claws, this is pretty much spot on, and they all turn to the side there, which would allow them to obviously dig into, um, substrate and be able to dig, f um, for laying eggs and things like that. They've been compared a lot to the back legs of, uh, giant tortoises, so that's a really good example as well. Obviously, you can see the next change. These guys have a very tall profile, as you kind of see here. Very rounded back as well. I can even argue they could probably make it a little bit more straighter. And they've got this quite long tail that looks rather nice. Really, really cool animals. I do love Camarasaurus. I especially love the changes to the face. It really accentuates that lip so they don't really look like a weird monster. This looks like a real Camarasaurus. I'm a really big fan of how this guy's come out. OGB also, I think, changed the pattern a lot. You can see that spotted, uh, spotted pattern on it. I think it's really came out wonderfully. I really like the changes that he makes. I really like that he doesn't just change the anatomy. I really like that he changes the colors on a lot of them as well and makes them look much nicer, especially on the uh, uh, Dryosaurus over here. And as we'll see going forward on a lot of other animals. So yeah, really, really awesome. So let them walk out and do their thing. Because uh, we don't want them in the corner there. Here we are. Okay, now we're moving on to carnivores. So we can see here we've got everyone's favorite uh, big bad uh, JP3 animal. We've got Ceratosaurus. I'd argue that the Ceratosaurus here has probably got some of the biggest changes in comparison to a lot of these other mods. Um, if we all remember the one in uh, Jurassic Park 3, it's only got that very uh, sim, uh, only that pretty much single horn. It's pretty much a T-Rex with that one horn in the front, but um, Ceratosaurus obviously has a very different skull being a Ceratosaur. And we can see it's got the very characteristic kind of two uh, nostril, uh, not nasal, uh, front horns there and then you've got the one on the uh, uh, tip of the snout there uh, I'm trying to think of the technical terms but they just kind of escape me at the moment but yeah really really wonderful we can also see a lot of the changes to the skull because um ceratosaurus had a very interesting skull it's a very long skull and you can see these large extensive lips as well a lot of uh, reconstructions of ceratosaurus have the lip uh, not the lips the teeth way too long because there's a thing called tooth, tooth slippage so what will happen is um as a uh, animal kind of decays, all the connective tissue in the mouth, uh, especially like the gums will decay and then the teeth kind of slip out of the socket. And a lot of people don't reconstruct them and fix that up. So it even happens in animals like saber tooth cats, stuff like that. It often leads to people really overestimating how long the canines were or rather how much actually stuck out from the gums and things like that. And I think this really came out rather wonderfully on this guy. This has got the nasal horn and kind of these two brow horns there. That's the technical terms. I managed to remember that. I just love the skin of the um, Ceratosaurus from uh, Jurassic Park 3. And I think it fits perfect with the great uh, anatomy. If only this one was a bit more reddish, it'd be perfect. This one kind of covers it, as you kind of see here. Really uh, change the skull up to be perfect. Changes the neck as well. Yeah, you also see there's lots of little osteoderms. We do have evidence of osteoderms along the back of Ceratosaurus. So that's actually based in uh, fact, which is also really, really cool. Some changes to the body as well, very much rounded. And like other Ceratosaurs, these guys have got five fingered hands, as you kind of see there, or four fingered, I mean. So one, two, three, four, rather than the later Titanurans, which have three, and even Tyrannosaurs that have two. So these guys have got those four fingered hands, which are really, really cool. And you can see some changes to the legs there. Uh, so you can see the pubic boot coming out. And I think the tail's also been extended a bit. As I mentioned, a lot of the dinosaurs have two shorter tails. But this is probably, I believe, one of the best edits from this pack. And it's really come out wonderfully. Definitely a big fan of this. So we'll let them run off and do their thing and move on to the next one. So next we've got uh, one returning from last time. But this is an OG Bear edit. We've got uh, everyone's favorite Australian Megaraptor and Australovenator.
Thank you, Mr. Ceratosaurus, for getting right in front of me, but let's see if we can get one. They're panicking at the moment, but we will try and get one in a good pose. Well, look here. It is perfect. So you can see the changes here. Looks really, really nice. Uh, you can see that I believe the head's even smaller than the pickle one. Um, makes it look different. It's because these Mega Raptorans, they have very small heads comparison, very long snouts. It still looks rather wonderful. The one thing we also really, really like is that they kept the uh, soft tissue crest, and I think that gives the Australovinata a very interesting profile uh, compared to a lot of the other dinosaurs. You've got that soft tissue crest going down there. Um, we can also see that the keratin and the, the arms of this guy, similar to a lot of the other edits, they greatly make the arms bigger because the ones in the original Frontier uh, reconstruction was far too small. And you can see this large claw there that could potentially have even more keratin. Though I think this is kind of the longest extent that I've seen it as. Really, really nice. And you have this big round body here. It's changes to the legs and I think also extension of the tail. Kind of see here. Looks really, really wonderful. Let's have a look at another skin. Yeah, that looks pretty much what um, Australovinatar would have looked like. I don't think there's really been any changes to the skin, just improvements on the anatomy compared to the uh, Camarasaurus and Triosaurus. But yeah, pretty spot on if I do say so myself. Let's see if you can spot the other one there. So I think yeah, there's one over here. There we are. This one's a really interesting pattern. But yeah, you can see the larger claws and the longer snout. Because we don't have too much about Megaraptorans, we don't have too much in terms of their fossils. But we, from what we do know, they kind of had that slender face and um, large arms, which they would use to... And there's been studies into Australovinatar itself, into its mobility of its wrists. So they would probably be able to semi-pronate, uh, to um, be able to better grapple their prey with their large arms. So that's a very unique hunting style compared to some of their relatives, such as Tyrannosaurs, which have big jaws to hunt things, which is very, very interesting. And um, I really like how this guy's come out. So... We're already making good progress, I think. Uh, we're going to let these guys run off and be maniacs uh, for whatever reason. So uh, next, we're moving on to the lagoons. So we're having a little break here. We've got, uh, first up, we've got Ichthyosaurus, which is uh, really, really awesome. Let's see if we can get one in the water. There's one. Sorry. See, one in the broad daylight. You can kind of see it here. That looks really, really nice. I'm a big fan of that. I really like the pattern down the uh, side here. It looks really, really nice. Let's see, we have a look at the other ones. This one I quite like because this has got probably the best uh, counter shading. Because uh, the reason a lot of animals, especially in the ocean, uh, kind of light bottoms and dark tops is because of counting shading counter shading so if I looked under here much harder to see it and then I look from the top it looks much more uh, uh, camouflage into the darkness of the ocean so it's very good camouflage for this animal and really helps it, especially since a good hunter and I think there have been some minor changes I think the eyes been made a little bit bigger uh, really really nice a um, little bit changes the anatomy uh, longer snout because ichthyosaurus did have quite a long snout we have some pretty good uh, ideas of how um ichthyosaurus looked because of soft tissue and this very rounded body very convergent evolution to dolphins very dolphin like with the dorsal fin at the back there and the um, pectoral and the um all the hips and the arms there technically on these guys but one thing I think would be a little bit better to put on is that um, the caudal keel. So a lot of animals that swim side to side, they have a large keel at the tail here, which kind of sticks out almost like a big bolting muscle because they have the two uh, big powerhouse muscles, especially in the tail, that kind of allow them to swim and quite fast as that at that. So I think adding that would make this pretty much perfect. But I do love these colors. I love the colors and especially the pattern on these guys. Makes it look really, really interesting. And even the uh, blank pattern, like, there's the, where's the black one? There's the black one. This one with a blank pattern would pretty much, would, would be pretty much what I expect uh, Ichthyosaurus to be, like, kind of a color. The most realistic, I think. But it came out rather awesome. I think we might actually just let these guys swim out for a bit and then see if we can find one without a pattern. Yeah, see, look, that one. 
See, this is the same one, but without the pen. See, look, that looks perfect. Like, that's pretty much what I expect an Ichthyosaurus to look like. So, really, really great job, OG Bear. Really nice to see some cool, more paleo edits coming out. Not they're all, all yeah, not everyone's caught in the craze of new species, but yeah, really, really interesting. So, our last legume animal, we're we'll moving to some giants. We've got Elasmosaurus. But let's let's have a look at you guys all swimming out and being happy. Want one of you kind of not in the shade? Let me have a look at you over here. This one looks nice. Are you? Yeah, no, no, no. I think we'll pick this one. This one's the nicest. But we can see how really beautiful this Elasmosaurus looks. We can see it doesn't look like an abyssal sea dragon or whatever. All these spikes and stuff were taken off. And I think this, um, even though the scales are, too, are still a bit large, from what soft tissue we know of um, plesiosaurs and things like that, they seem to have very, very smooth skin, which would obviously reduce drag and allow them to swim better. But we can see a lot of the changes in this guy here, much smoother. Uh, and also these large teeth that allow them to catch fish. They were probably uh, quite, a, quite hooked and things like that, rather than kind of the big bulky teeth that a lot of the other like dinosaurs and marine reptiles had these guys had these long teeth and the catch slip and prey and things like that like squid and small fish and potentially even like baby mosasaurs things like that so really really cool so got this really really long neck that elasmosaurus is quite famous for although i think this is still a bit short because it still has to fit the rig but yeah we've also got this long body here i think also there's some big changes to the pectoral fins to make a little bit longer a little bit more rounded from what we know they definitely did have quite uh, extensive soft tissue so quite a long neck and uh, with uh, quite a bit of uh, chunk to it uh, move to the back here it's still got this of course little like um, dorsal fin a little like a uh, thing here but in reality it probably did not most likely would have been smooth until the tail and the tail would have had some sort of kind of fluke or keel or however you want to say it uh, whether it's vertical or like dorsal almost like a whale fluke that remains to be seen it could be very between different species of plesiosaurs but the most kind of recent is door eventually but i would extend this out quite a bit more to make it look a little bit more uh, rounded and if I were to change the textures, I would make it uh, much more smooth looking. I would basically make it the same as the uh, Ichthyosaurus over here. Very smooth kind of skin. The, sm the scales would have been so small, you basically would look like smooth skin. But yeah, I think it's come out rather wonderfully. Really, really big fan. Let's have a look at this guy here. Really, really awesome to see a cool Elasmosaurus. Definitely a big fan. So I'll let you swim off and do your thing. OGB has really done a wonderful job with the skin as well. You can see the skin has changed and they've got the counter shading, uh, as I mentioned. So basically, if anything saw it from underneath, it'd be like, oh, that's just the sky. And everything looked over uh, from the top, it'd be, oh, no, it's literally just um, the deep sea. So it really helps with a lot of animals. It breaks your outline. So that really helps with a lot of camouflage, even though it looks simple. But yeah, really, really, really awesome. Uh, next, we're going to move on to uh, some theropods everyone's favorite sort uh, theropods we've got here albertosaurus making another return so you can see here most of those changes are definitely in the skull as you can kind of see here um it doesn't quite have those really ridiculously big uh brow ridges that the default one has but it's still not made into new bosses like the pickle one this one has them in kind of uh new models and stuff but yeah really really cool i'm a really big fan of how this has come out uh definitely changes the skull there really makes it fit much more of how um albertosaurus looked with that very thin look it was kind of like that in between between the uh pinocchio rex you know quinzarosaurus and then those big bulky ones like um tyrannosaurus uh and uh, tarbosaurus things like that it's kind of that little in between uh, really really awesome and there aren't like albertosaurians you can see some changes to the neck as well really really big and round bodies you can see here those two fingers 
longer tail. You can definitely tell the t uh, tell the tail's been extended a little bit to better fit. Probably just some pretty minor edits to fit the skeletal. There hasn't been really any changes to the patterns, I think. Mainly just to the skull, which makes it look so much better. Because uh, Bertosaurus is known from quite a few wonderful specimens. And um, it's I think it's a rather aesthetically looking, uh, aesthetically pleasing looking animal. And really cool that OG Bears really uh, gave a good effort to make it fit into the game and make it scientifically accurate rather than kind of the Jurassic Park monstrosities that we've got. But really, really big fan. I think there's been some changes to the body as well, make it a little bit more round. Changes to the legs make it a little bit more, almost like a, just a little bit more accurate to the anatomy, some minor touch-ups. Most of these are pretty minor, but I always point out the more obvious things, which is really, really cool. But yeah, we'll let those run off and do their thing. So next we're moving on to uh, going back to the Jurassic and uh, we'll have a look at the Allosaurus. This one's rather nice. We'll have a look at you. You can see the basically the greatest change to the skull because this is, I believe this is based on Allosaurus fragilis which is, has absolutely beautiful skull and crest there, how it like almost turns up like that. It looks really, really pretty. And also some changes like those uh, more rounded uh, face there to the crest rather than the boxy one that's uh, Jurassic Parks. Almost looks more like a T-Rex than a, a Allosaurus. But yeah, the really, really beautiful skull. There's so many beautiful skulls of Allosaurus as well. It's just a really beautiful animal. Um, you can see it's very like uh, skinny as well with those large crests that's coming on here it looks basically what the specimens look like you also see that very s-shaped neck which is very characteristic i believe of a allosaurus very kind of like a big s shape there i'd say probably the um arms are pretty good as well you can see the big three-fingered hands and they've got pretty big arms as well and you can see also um i'd argue they're probably a little bit too high up on the uh, up here but still looks rather nice uh, though that's probably just a placement thing. We don't really know where kind of the scapula coracoid and things kind of hang out like that. Um, quite a rounded body, and you can see the uh, ischium or the pubic boot try to come down quite strongly here. And um, then you can see also, I believe the tail's been extended a bit as well. Um, changes the legs to make them look a little bit more bird like than kind of the elephantine feet. Uh, but yeah, it looks really, really beautiful. But you can see most of those changes are in the skull. And just changing that skull even then really just adds so much to the character and really makes it feel like a realistic animal. And I think there's also been some changes to the skins. You can also see like the little uh, reticulated or spotted patterns kind of going down here and going down the sides. Very reminds me of things like uh, black throats, black throat monitor lizards, things like that. Uh, but it looks really, really wonderful. I'm definitely a big fan. Really, really cool. Let them run off and do their thing. Next up, we've got uh, the penultimate. We've got Acrocanthosaurus. So here we've got everyone's favorite big bad Acro. Really, really awesome how this guy's came out. You can see a lot of the changes here. The Tyrannosaurus, like pseudo Tyrannosaurus one from the game, looks very, very different from this one here. You can see the change of the skull. They've almost got like that hook jaw going on. Very, very similar to most other um, Cacarodontosaurids or early kind of like uh, animals like that. The centineurin types, really, really interesting skull. We have some pretty good preserved skulls of Acrocanthosaurus, so looks pretty spot on there. And also this uh, big ridge here, it's not just this fat hump, it's also got a little bit of a shape to it, and they have, really have this S-shaped neck. And Acrocanthosaurus, I believe, means high-sailed or high-spined lizard. So that, that characteristic kind of high uh, ridge down its back really gives it an interesting name. But I really like how it isn't just a fatty hump, but you can see there's a definitely a little bit of shape to it and really gives Acrocanthosaurus a pretty unique look to it. Definitely a big fan. You also see those arms there. Acrocanthosaurus has the three-fingered hands and also quite long claws, actually, which is rather cool. I see the pubic boot coming in as well. Some changes to the feet. I believe the feet have been made a little bit smaller as well. Um, I believe Jurassic Park sometimes make the dinosaur's feet a little too big, but also it's nice as well. And also you can see the tail, I believe, is uh, 
about this. It hasn't really changed much, but you can see that the ridge kind of shrink as you go down the tail and really gives that an interesting profile as you look from it afar. But you can see the major changes are definitely in the skull and you can see it's definitely uh, a lot more thinner and uh, more adapted because uh, those car caracodontosaurs very, very much had those long skinny skulls that we use to kind of bite uh, the flesh. They were more adapted to feeding on things like hadrosaurs and sauropods or more soft animals compared to the more kind of uh, ceratopsians and, uh, and chylosaurs, those hard uh, animals, those hard bony animals that tyrannosaurids, especially tyrannosaurus, which is probably the ultimate example, were adapted to eating those kind of things. But yeah, really, really awesome. So let that acro walk off. And um, we're going to be moving on now. Last but certainly not least, we have got uh, Cacarodontosaurus, the Cacarodontosaurid, obviously, who's had a big change because we know how ugly it kind of looks in the original game. But yeah, really, really awesome. So we can see how beautiful this guy looks. So um, you can see there hasn't been too many changes to the body. The Urken think tail's definitely been made a little bit longer and some changes to the body to make just a little bit more rounded, a little bit more like realistic Cacarodontosaurus. But just look at this guy. Look at that skull. Uh, Cacarodontosaurus definitely has that very tall skull look, very, sk uh, very skinny skull. But yeah, really, really awesome. Uh, I like how it's definitely been changed to better fit the anatomy of uh, Cacarodontosaurus. And Cacarodontosaurus obviously means shark tooth lizard. So they have these big teeth that very much look like a shark. And it looks like it has lips as well. I believe it has lips. You can see it kind of extends through there. Um, very like thinner jaws. They definitely did have a very strong bite force. I believe like... Um, Dinosaurs such as Giganotosaurus still had a bite force of like at least two to three tons. So it's still a very, very powerful bite, but it's not as hyper-specialized as something like Tyrannosaurus, which had a really high bite force of like six to seven tons. So really, really huge uh, bite force there, but really, really cool. You can see the changes to the skull. Uh, not too much of the brow ridges, so you could be a little bit more speculative there. But yeah, really, really nice long skull. Those Caracarodontosaurids have those really interesting skulls. I believe also some changes to the neck, a little bit more S-shaped, very almost reminiscent of kind of the uh, uh, Allosaurus in that regard. Those bigger arms there kind of hugging each other. I believe they've also been extended a little bit and made a little bit bigger, especially those arms there. A uh, little bit bodies thinned out. Feet have been made a little bit smaller, I think, as well. Also add the Hylux as well. And then you see that long, long tail there. Looks rather beautiful, and I really love the skin as well. It really fits Caronotosaurus. Really, really beautiful. And I believe this uh, skins have been changed as well. Kind of this bottle, spotted pattern, uh, as you can kind of see here, looks so nice on the Caronotosaurus. And even, even the little bits of dots around the crest there, even though they're not as flashy as the other ones, I think really give it a really interesting, and I would argue more realistic look, because it, looks, it makes it look a little bit more camouflaged and uh, breaks that outline so you wouldn't be able to spot it. But yeah, really, really, really awesome. Uh, beautiful, beautiful animals. So uh, let's that go and do their thing. So yeah, I think this will be a great place to end the video. So OG Bear, you've done a really wonderful job. I'm going to cover part two, hopefully in the next week or so. It's because I'm trying to try and pop these mods out as quickly as possible before the update of uh, Dominion and update 1.5, the multipack. But yeah, I um, really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to get the little bell icon to get notified of anything. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And bye bye.